International Raceway, where today we're having the Hang 10 of Funny Car 500. You'll see Pat Foster in the very center of Vega, the defending champion, Little John Lombardo, Danny Ongayas, the Big John Mass Machine, Jervis Modillo, Jim Needoff, Paisano Matsubara, world champion Gene Snow, Tom Ferraro, the Brad Stenberg in Vega, and Big Jim Dunn. afraid of something, but uh, I think my biggest fear since I was little was fire and height. So I figured the best way to get rid of it was just join the fire department. As far as uh, funny cars go, I am uh, still get nervous at the starting line because you never know exactly what you're going to do until you do it, and sometimes it's too late. And I, I think if you lost all your fear and respect, you just quit being fun and you get hurt, and you, you just got to respect them. That's all there is to it. Because you just never know what they're going to do. But uh, why worry about death if it comes sooner or later? And here's a treat. Next up to qualify is Jim Dunn in the friend setting of rear engine Plymouth Barracuda funny car. In the starting gate, the green light is on and Dunn is underway down the quarter mile in his qualifying attempt. Looks like Dunn's got a good one cooking. Wait a minute, something goes off the car. Dunn blows the hop off the car. Four elapsed times. Only two hours to funny car eliminations. Incidentally, fans might want to check out the frantic pit work by Jim Dunn's crew as they are taping together the body on his funny car so he can be in the first the round. The hood went down and ripped the bolts right out from under the windshield. And the air got under it and peeled it right off the top. So you're just going to have to stiffen the hood and something which we hadn't counted on. I got a good crew and they're over there working up off rivet, put silver tape on it. We'll try to make it. I'm one of the older 
older drivers out there, but uh, most of your good drivers are probably in their late 30s, early 30s. And right now, just in the last two or three years, the young kids are starting to come in, which is good. Attention to funny car drivers, only one hour to funny car eliminations. The staging lanes are open. We got a rear engine car, and it's a, sort of a prototype right now. There's only three of them running, and uh, we're having a little bit of bad luck right here, but I think the other two are having a little worse luck than we are. Drag racing is simply two cars racing down a quarter of a mile. You know, the burnout, you do simply get your tires hot and give the crowd a little show. The tree comes down, you can go when it turns green. If you're too thin, it turns red and you lose. Steve Byrne is in the starting gate, and the R's are up. He's underway. Oh, a gigantic wheel stand by Byrne, the super chief. He sets her down. Here's to be all right. The car is out of control. Hold on. Byrne is in the... I've been married to Pat for 17 years. I wouldn't be honest if I didn't say I, I didn't worry, but you really can't worry that much. And Jim's proved to me over the years that he's very safety conscious about things, and uh, he's very good about it. When someone is killed on the drag strip, I don't really connect it with Jim. You feel bad about it, but uh, if, I, if I let everything get to me, I, I could go nuts after a while. The funny car is just a plastic body that they've taken off of a regular production car and you put it on just a, basically a short dragster frame with a dragster engine in it. Uh, a total deal just to go out and buy it with the trailer equipment, tow truck and everything. You're, you're talking about an honest thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000. So where I was lucky to start when it was cheaper and I just kept racing as it went and I've kept up on the money deal that way. Attention all funny car drivers and crews, only a half hour till funny car elimination. You should be in the staging lane. And here's good news for all you fans, big Jim Dunn has repaired his top of the Barracuda. He will be in the first round of elimination. And I'm known as a lever. I'll usually guess on the lights and I'll anticipate and try to get out on them. They'll give me a tenth of a second, which I can do because it's I'm not a paid driver. A paid driver is very bad if you red lights. Well, my crew says we don't red light twice a year. We're not trying hard enough. So we will take a chance if we're down. If we get set there to tonight or any other night, I'll leave on him because I know he can beat me fair, so i got to try to cheat. And the only way we can cheat, honestly, is to anticipate the light. And that's just an honest gamble. setting lowy last time at 6.64 seconds. Setzer and Foster, of course, hold the track record at a 6.52 elapsed time. They also hold the distinction of being the quickest funny car in the sport at 6.40 seconds. In this race, it'll be Gary Bergen, the Braskin at Bergen Vega, and Gary Detchum, the Detchum and Walker at Ford Pinto. They're all set. There they go. They're side by side. Bergen falls back, and Gary Detchum in an upset at 7.21 seconds. In the next pairing, it's the Setzer Vega, driven by Pat Foster against Jervis O'Neill, the King Rat, Chevy Camaro. They're both staged up. The green light, they leave side by side. O'Neill off the loose control the King Rat. Foster at 6.47 elapsed time. Now it's the goal of Sush Matsumar, the by Donald Matsumar Vega. And there goes Matsumar on his burnout. His opponent will be world champion Gene Snow from Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, this is going to be a good race. Matsumar against Snow. They're both ready to go. Snow clicks off a 6.68 for the win. Top speed of the event at 222 miles per hour. The next race will pit the KG veteran Jim Dunn, who has gone to the semifinal. He has drawn at Pete Everett's Little Demon. This is the second half of the semi-final race. The winner of this will go into the final against the awesome Barry Sister Vega driven by Pat Foster. The world's greatest and the fastest money. Six 
189 elapsed time, speed of 194.80 miles per hour. It's Jim Dunn into the final against Pat Foster, the Barry Setzer Vega, for the Funny Car 500 title. They call us the budget racers, mainly because we can't uh, buy a pink motor or a black engine. So we build our own motors and we do all our own mechanical work that we can. Yeah, I've got a very good crew here. They don't get paid anything. And the main thing, they really enjoy racing, so they're very good on the crew. My family gets involved quite a bit. Like my son there is my number one pit crew, and my daughters help pack the chutes and pour the oil when we go out. My wife, she pours the bleach and helps line us up. Last year we went back east, and we went through 23 states, and raced 18 times. We were gone five weeks, and that's what I called a vacation. Qualifying. He's mowed down three opponents. He is in the final, and he'll be going against Pat Foster in the Austin Ferry says Vega that holds OET at a 6 70 lap time. Actually, what we're doing now is warming up the starting line with the torch. We do this before the final. There's no liquid down, no reason to be alarmed. We're doing this to give the driver and their crew members the best chance to launch their car in this all important final. It's just to warm the starting line. It's the combination, of course, to launch these cars. It's two things. It's the heat, the stickiness of the tires, and, of course, the heat itself of the track. Before we enter the all-important final, a real credit to Jim Dunn and his crew for their frantic pit work as three hours ago, his car... Last was round, we have a saying that we usually use that uh, we're going to put the motor on kill. Uh, when we say put the motor on kill, it means we're putting in as much nitro or a little more than we know it could possibly use, and if we're wrong, it's going to explode, and that's why we call them a little seven-second hand grenade. And he'll be using all his canniness Everything he has is savvy to get by Pat Foster to leave first the starting line and hold it off before they reach the finish. Jim Dunn's experimental rear engine Barracuda is designed, of course, to lead hard at the starting line. He left very hard, he's held his opponent off, he's been able to shut off early speeds 190 miles an hour or so, and therefore defeat his opponents. This is what we can look for in the final against Pat Foster. He'll be done at trying to leave first and trying to hold off the Vega to the finish line. Burnout, first of all, in the right hand lane by Pat Foster the very sets for Vega. Vega sets them on fire as he warms the rear tires. This is it, the all-important final. If this is the second annual, hangs at a 20 car 500. In the tower lane now, the burnout by Jim Dunn. Whoa, Dunn just smokes them all the way down the track to the three-quarter mark, putting on quite a show in this final race. Quite a feat from Fireman from Amarada, Jim Dunn, that he's even in this final. He backs up his Barracuda, and three hours ago, this car was a convertible. He blew the top off in qualifying, and here he is in the final. A lot of guys like to play football, baseball, or something, but uh, even when I was little, I'd, I'd like to go racing now. When I was very small, my dad, he liked horses, and he had me a horse, and we lived out in the dairy, and he wanted me to work there, but uh, I told him I didn't want nothing to do with that act, so my dad says, well, what do you want to do? I says, I want to go racing. So he says, for my 16th birthday, he bought me a 40 Ford, and a cam, two carburetors, and about 50 bucks worth of tools, and said, there you go. I've been racing ever since. And we got competitive about oh, 1963 and 64. We started racing with the Alders here. It was Dunn, Merritt, Velasco, Coop. We ran it for two years, won the Winter Nationals both years. Then we went dragsters, Henry and I, and it uh, didn't turn out too well. I wanted to go Chrysler. He didn't want to. He was a racer when we met and uh, when I married him, and he still is. So I've got a new partner named Yates. We went dragster racing. We were low ET at Riverside third week out for the hot rod manufacturers meet and had a quit and then I went down and saw a wreath on a motor and uh, he said I'll give you a motor if you want to run a car and I had a brand new car then it didn't do too well it had an experimental woody front end on it he's easy to get along with and he's a good sport and uh, then we got a new car we got the rainbow car they called it and uh, we won Bakersfield that year for the fuel championship in 69. We won Division 7, 69. Now, if he didn't race, I wouldn't want to go out because it would be so boring. And we went to the funny car, the Dunn and Reef funny car. 
We won Bakersfield again in 71 with a funny car. I believe that do what you want to do now and worry about being old when you're old. I can't see saving my money. I do what I want to do today and worry about tomorrow. So I guess you could say I live day by day rather than what will I be doing 30 years from now. After he built the funny car, he just started winning a lot. And the model company came on to build models, make models, though. Dad said, sure. And they were just, you know, they were going to give him some money, but, he, you know, he didn't really care about the money, and they ended up giving him one and a half percent plus $500. Used to, if you had $1,000, you could be 80% of the guys because they only had $500. Now everybody's got their thousand dollars. Now you go out there and you got the factories behind them and everything. So you're you're beating a bigger factory now. It's a bigger thing. It actually gives you more satisfaction when you can beat one because it is harder and it's more competitive than it used to. Here's a special trophy for red light and that's hanging in there. What of a kind. Neato, right? Why did you red light? Why did I red light? Because the light was too slow. <laughs> I was perfect. Every driver here in all must win to earn those valuable points to lead them to the World Championship Series final at Orange County International Raceway on September 16th. The winner there. I can't believe it, man. We got robbed last night. Like we're laying there in bed, and I got my bill full by the TV, and the kids got his pants lying there. Get up this morning, both our billfolds are empty. I mean, that guy had a little hair to come in with five of us sleeping in there. I, said, I didn't even find out about it until I went in and got a glass of orange juice today and had to borrow some money from a buddy. Yeah, yeah. I just really started doing stuff last year when we went on tour. It was really fun because we, it was just me, my mom, my sisters. We were the crew, so to speak. And my dad was driving. I feel close to my dad because I always go with him. Coming up in qualifying right now is the brand new Sophie sales car owned by Larry Huff. Dave Beebe, one of the finest drivers of funny cars in the country, is at the wheel. He's pulling into the bleach box right now with his new challenge funny car. Getting ready for his burnout, and here he comes. Dave Beebe out of the bleach box. He'll be backing the car up, and Dave Beebe now getting ready to make his qualifying attempt. Thus far for funny cars in Sacramento, 213 miles an hour. Corey Asvito now. The funny car the drummer goes through. He runs in the lapse time of 7.67 seconds. Here goes his burnout. A strong, smoky burnout by Jim Dunn taking those tires. Backing up into his own tracks to provide the best traction. Dunn now approaches the starting line. Dunn goes sideways, he gets it straight, he keeps it off through it. Uh oh, it looks like he may have missed the piston about halfway down. He still has 7.31 seconds, enough to qualify into this funny car eliminator program at Sacramento Raceway Park. It uh, took all the rings and it's oiling. When it gets oil, the fuel we run will detonate real hard. We'll go back. We'll go back into the race. You know, just hope for luck that we can luck to it. It'll probably run 720, which is fair. That's not even fair. That's pretty bad. But it'll, rather than just going home, we'll try. Qualifying in top fuel eliminator for those all-important World Championship Series points here in Sacramento. We have two cars attempting to qualify into that 16-car field in competition eliminator. western part of the United States. Funny car qualifying continues. First up is Benjamin Walker. And a 7.51 second lap time puts him in the program. So they And it's 7.97 seconds. That really puts him in the program. Coming in trailing with a 7.96 seconds. It looks like from here to be getting high-wing. 
We have word from the finish line. Got a little bit singed, but is in good shape. The first race of the first round of Funny Car Eliminator, this World Championship Series event at Sacramento Raceway Park, fits the only two rear engine funny cars in the world and breaks the brakes for Dave Mata, who has to be the underdog. They meet in the first round side by side. Davey Mata with a brand new car, and it looks a little bit different as the body is set down very low over the car. And Jim does an all around of that is most respected in funny car racing throughout the entire United States. He drives that rear engine Barracuda, certainly one of the toughest in the country. Both cars heading now towards the starting line. The three counts now are both on the line. Dunn with a big lead. 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 Dunn with a big Mata trailing with a slowing 136 miles an hour at 8.31 seconds. Jim Dunn winning the first race, moving on to round number two and the all-important World Championship Series point. He's probably one of the best drivers out there as far as I'm concerned. He's not so well headed enough that he's the kind of driver that after the race we all go out and party together and have a good time. He's got a very short temper, but it doesn't last that long. You know, he, uh, he's mad enough to five minutes later he figures all about what, what made him mad and uh, Back to the same old. I figure I'll drive for another three or four more years. Uh, tuning the motors, getting chances to work, that's the hardest part. So uh, I'll probably just go into helping a kid get his car to run. He'll be the driver and I'll just go into the background. I haven't really decided what I'd like to do with my life yet. I'm, I'd like to get into drag racing, but I feel I should have some other thing to do in case I don't make it. I've been thinking of uh, taking a class next year in accounting. I miss Jim the most when he's at the fire station. Yeah, I've been on a fire department about nine years. I had a job's very good. You got good guys to work with, and you never know what's going to happen. Maybe we'll have a fire today, maybe we won't. It works the worst part because there's just no way of getting home then. I mean, if 
you're out racing, you can, like I said, it's more of a family affair. At work, you're gone for 24 hours, and you're gone, uh, one third of my life we're at work. That's probably the most lonesome time. I could probably do better right now, say, driving to the race car than I could in the fire department, but uh, you have good security, and i got a family with three kids. Like I said, I'm a professional hobbyist. That's the way we look at it. And uh, I get a race enough where I'm satisfied, and i still got a good enough job that keeps my wife happy. I was, uh, I should say, scared of heights. Just, you know, I mean, literally, scared of getting on top of a coffee table, even. And uh, to get on the job, the first time I failed the physical agility, which consists of going up five stories up a ladder truck and, and then down and everything. I went up it and down it, and the guy, guy got down the end. The guy says, boy, I'm sorry, Mr. Dunn, you failed. And I said, man, I'm happy I went up and down it. You know, I thought, man, you had to pull me down. Two. The only thing that really troubles me is his uh, temper. He's got kind of a bad temper, and so do I, and sometimes we kind of get into it. If he's wrong about it, he will apologize. I learned from my father to be a good loser. Like you said, sometimes you gotta win, sometimes you gotta lose. Jim's a very good dancer, but he won't dance. keep something going. I mean, if you like each other and have fun or whatever you do, it goes. It's like anything else. If it's gels, it gels that we try to do things together. The most important thing I can do to my family is just make sure to try to keep them healthy and give them enough to eat and clothes and see if they have a good time, give them an education. And they'll have to do what they want to do themselves. My happiest uh, memory of my wife it have to be yesterday or a minute ago. There's a feeling when you speak up And you say, give me a try And you know that though it's new to you You've got the kind of heart and what it takes To make it fly
stop here, ladies and gentlemen, for a moment. Okay, yeah, the dust is pretty bad, but uh, I've been racing for about 20 years. And 20 years I've been running on the streets. I've been running out in Dad's cow pasture. and been in it ever since high school, and uh, I've seen worse things than this. I mean, I won't run in it now because we're going too fast right now. I mean, 20 years ago, I've been going about 80 miles an hour as fast as I could go, so I don't think you really hurt it, because about now I'll be doing 80 when I come out of a burnout. 20 years, 20 years is a long time. Say Sush and Paisano, McEwen. There's quite a few over the years you have to know them, but there's a, just a bunch of drivers. We just know each other at the racetrack, and then when I'm at home, we never talk to each other. I don't really get worried because he's a pretty good driver. He's been driving for 20 years. From Denver, Colorado, Sush Matsubaro, the Paisano Matsubaro team out of Los Angeles, Big Jim Dunn, and the Dunn and Reese car. Also, other top machines competing for a great amount of cash and awards at Salt Lake City.
Dunn and Reed, rear engine 20 car, top scores the starting line. Dunn, a big favorite here with the fans at Bonneville Racetrack. It's a different altitude than he's used to working on. He's fired up. And he thunders down the quarter mile. He's making a fantastic run. A very good qualifying run for Big Jim Dunn with a 6.85 seconds. 6.85, a new Bonneville track record. Last year when we started, uh, everybody had three-speed transmissions. They weighed about 2,500 pounds, and they thought that was the answer. And, uh, we got together and said, they're all wrong, you know. So we built a lightweight one and made as much like a drag as we could, high gear and everything. And uh, we were the winningest car on the West Coast. So this year we figured, well, let's go one step more. So we built the rear engine and uh, it's been giving us nothing but a headache. But um, we're starting to get the combination and it must be working because we've got the track record here tonight. that he not race. Sometimes I think I'd like him to race a little less, only because he's not home as much as I'd like him to be. Howard, funny car. Sush Matsubara up against Bob Pickett. than that, he has the advantage. Jim Dunn now staging up. They both leave the line, but it's Dunn with the advantage. And he takes the race. We broke the track record here and almost set a national record because of the altitude difference. They give a 5% cushion at this altitude, but it's a little bit, we have to run a little bit quicker than what we think right now, so we're not going to try to back it up rather than hurt the motor to save it for the elimination. All right, we're now getting ready for the final. It's that KG Jim Dunn and his Barracuda up against Pete Everett's Little Demon. Bob Pickett doing the driving. This will be the final run of the points meet. All the gold on the line. All the marbles up for grabs. In the background, you can see Jim Dunn getting into that rear engine car. A lot of points at stake here, and Big Jim needs those points. Now we're getting ready for the burnouts, and you can see Jim Dunn's body high in the air, the plastic bodied replica of Detroit Iron. Every thought of motive 
we used to race it with him, and Reed's been a racer for many years. He was racing before I was even. He was on the lake beds. I used to go out there. And uh, he picks up a car. It was sort of a friendship type deal where my original partner, Yates, he got married, so he wanted out. So I had a car and didn't have an engine. And Reed says, well, come on over, and I'll give you an engine. So that was, oh, probably eight years ago. He's still giving me engines. No, Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy in turn pays for all, most of his parts, and we just sell them at cost basis. And we do most of the machine work. And as far as experimental and test parts, Jimmy tests them for us. He's been one of my major sponsors, and uh, we've gotten along good. Well, you have to get along good to go for eight or ten years being together like this here. Like I said, he gives me the shop, the truck, all the machine work. No, Jim's good people. If he wasn't good people, we would be looking for a new, <laughs> somebody else new. I mean, we might need a nice younger driver and all. When you, when you get old and bald like Jim, what are you going to do? Before I got my kids for But you know what they say? They say there's old drivers and there's bold drivers, and you don't find too many bold old drivers. So so for that long, length of thought, I mean, Jimmy and I have a very happy relationship. This summer's been a lousy year for me. I've had a lot of fun, but the year, the year before was an exceptional year. We won quite a few races. We were probably one of the top cars on the West Coast. Out here, we won more than anybody. But you don't like to be a loser. It's fun to work on something new once in a while, but you should get results. And we just weren't getting the results. And it was telling on us, because we were ready to cut the car up. We were ready to go back, back to a conventional car. And uh, then it started respawning. We all got rejuvenated again. Now we're ready to work on it. It'd be easy if there was a common problem, but there's never a common problem. Like today, we put a new Ford rear end in it. It's an $1,100 unit just for the third member and the housing. It's been tied up for two weeks getting it. The frame's been painted, sandblasted, all different mounts in and everything. The day's the day before the race. We slipped, we got our axles last night. We got the bearings pressed on this morning. Okay. Come down, put the axles in, they're each an inch too short. So they say, well, you can get to fix that if you go to Ontario and pick up this other hub. So, okay, so we tear the rear end apart. I make it to Ontario, come back, and that one doesn't work either. So now we're putting back the rear end that we spent $1,200 to take out. The kid I sold my old car to last week, you know, it's Mike Dietrich. I hope he knows there's more to it than just getting in and driving it because he's going out to get his driver's license today. Show me how to build a motor and how to run a car, how to set everything, how to mix the nitro. He just showed me. I didn't know anything when I started. Yeah. Everything I know now, he's He's trying. He's going to have a hard time. I told him it's going to cost you at least $2,000 to learn just in broken parts and stuff. And, uh, Maybe you'll make it, maybe you won't. Right now he's down to 750, which when you consider he just stepped out of a Volkswagen and stepped into a fueler, I think he's doing pretty good. He's not scared of the car, he does what we tell him. We tell him not to overextend yourself to learn what the car's like, and he does. Everybody's laughing at him, sort of, because he's made maybe 14 runs, but he's down to a 750, he hasn't crashed it, he hasn't broken anything but a rear end. And uh, I think that's very good for a beginner. Well, the first run, he went about three feet. Second run, he went about four feet. The next run, he went about 12 feet off the line. You know, I said, hey, what's the matter? You know, he just said, I think he's going to the left. I said, well, it looks good. You know, what's the matter this time? I, I think it went to the right. And I said, OK, you know, don't push it, because, you know, you feel bad. You tell a guy, well, you know, you're stupid. Go all the way through, and he kills himself. In order to get your license, you're required to make so many runs for a car. You gotta make you six. You gotta make uh, one eighth mile, two moderate, one more moderate, and uh, two full. And you make those, and after you make those, and two full, and you get your license after you make two full. If you think it's good enough. You know, it's a good old car. Last time I drove it was a uh, week before I sold to him, and uh, it went at 685. So he'll do it pretty quick. From a Barracuda Funny Car, needing a 715 or better to get his NHRA AA Funny Car license. They're bearing up by Diedrich, showing a lot of smoke for the rear tires, getting them rear tires good and warm. Diedrich backing up, just about set to go now. He's in the starting gate. The green light comes on, and Diedrich on a good run. He needs a 7, a 1, 5, or better. He makes it for his NHRA driver's license. But alone, the road was lonely, a 
alone I thought I'd always be Now you're here The road is full of light So very bright With all the light The love can't help but grow A light that cannot help but show My song is you. This is the annual Manufacturers 20 Car Team Championship, featuring the finest names in 20 car racing. The entries include the Who's Who of Drag Racing, the Shy Town Hustler, the Blue Max, Jerry Setzer's Vega, Don Perdome, Tom McEwen. Virtually every name of the finest names in the sport of 20 car racing. They'll all race three rounds in round robin style racing at the 20 car team championships. The two quickest elapsed times will go in the final for the individual 20 car champion. Well, we've both been racing a long time. Uh, we both started out with double-A fuel alerts. He went to dragsters. We got into funny cars. I guess we're both pretty ornery, so we're, we just get along real good. You, you know he's a really a good racer, so, you know, that brings out the competitive spirit because of the fact that if we lose, we have to take a lot of harassment afterwards, so we always try extra hard when we race. Most of the time, you know, like our parts are his, his parts, we can borrow, uh, we help each other whenever we can. There's no problem there. Oh, he's a great guy. You just, you know, you if you understand him and everything, and, and you know that if you do bad, the harassment's gonna come, and if he does bad, he expects the same from you, and you know, we get along real fine. He was doing a lot of experimenting uh, with the rear engine car, and you know, like nobody else is venturing to try it out on a full scale basis like he is. I think, but everything's coming around now where, you know, it's starting to justify for him holding out and trying it for this long. Why do you like drag racing? No, it's fun. It's the best. Volkswagens, but they're not here. <laughs> it's really bitching. Fun to watch. So I meet a lot of people. I like to listen to the engines. It's like racing. <laughs> I like the noise. See the girls. Far out, just far out. Noise. <laughs> it's thrilling. <laughs> oh, it's just really exciting. I like to see cars win each other. Well, my responsibility as a starter is to make sure that the cars are safe and they're not leaking any fuel, not leaking any oil. And the car is safe to travel down the quarter mile and when it's over and the driver has his shootout or unbuckles his seatbelt, whatever, that he's safe and the car is safe and there's no problems. Jim Dunn, uh, Jim has a exceptionally good starting line reaction time plus the fact that Jim's car seems to launch or leave the starting line uh, quite a bit quicker than the average car being that it's a straight clutch car. Normally with this super quick reaction and super quick launch off the starting line with this car, he'll win quite a few races. Chevy Camaro. This is a brand new car that sets a machine driven by Foster. Jervis O'Neill set in the tower side, Foster set in the spectator. Jervis O'Neill's on fire. He hits the bottle while Pat Foster goes on to low elapsed time of 6.59 seconds. There's a red light on the track. The emergency crew rolls to the aid of Jervis O'Neill. The number five qualifier for the Ford team, John Collins. Next, the number two qualifier, Dwayne Ong. The number one qualifier for the Ford team, Richard Tharp and the Blue Max. Next, we have little John Lombardo, and next we have Jeff Cordy. Then Dave Beebe, Whipple and Mr. Ed, Jim Murphy, the Holy Smokes. Next, we have Jungle Jim Lieberman and Gary Bergen, the Brasket and Bergen Vega. 
The Dodge team led by the Chi-Town Hustler and Ron Colson at Big Jim Dunn from Lombarada, California, number two qualifier for the Plymouth team. And the Hawaiian, number two, driven by Leroy Chatter in a 6.70, 80 laps time. Sush Matsubara for Paisano Matsubara, number two, Pat Foster, the very sensor Vega at a 6.59. Gary Watson is Paddy Wagon Wheel Stander. Watson underway, the front wheels are up. The Sparks with the rear end. Watson making his way down the quarter mile. Gary Watson, the entire quarter mile with a shower of Sparks. Quite an exhibition. It's Cheryl Greer, the 14, flies on Matsumara for the Chevy team. Matsumara will be in the tower side. They're in the stage lights, they're all set. a third car Paisano, you know, he's piled up. When you're racing, you overextend yourself. That's probably the most hazardous time for a driver. Now that the one, he sheared all the lug nuts off. I mean, that's an act of God. There's no way you're going to fix it. He's just lucky he didn't get uh, hurt, you know. And he's very good for crashing three times and flipping twice, and uh, he doesn't seem to get scared a bit. So, I mean, he's sure not afraid of it. That exhibition by Richard Schroeder in his Dodge Challenger. The wheels are off the Schroeder's machine. The sparks are flying. He goes the entire quarter mile on two wheels. Okay, the quickest two laps time still remain. Billy Myers, the 651, and Ron Wilson, the 657. 
But that could change right here. As Jim Dunn, it was a burnout for the Green Turtle. And I Dunn, it's going on for the Green Turtle Mustang. Jim Dunn, the crew members out there assisting him and pushing him back as far as the reverse gear. In contrast, Wayne on back his machine up with the aid of the reverser and the Ford Mustang. They're both set to go now. They're staged up in the green light. It's the wire that Jim Dunn moved the first. Wayne Ong has broken something, and the Mustang has done and streaks down the quarter mile to a 684 victory. Some drivers are lucky, and, you know, some aren't. Like uh, the guy saying for me that I'm a, one of the luckiest unlucky guys there is because if I lose a race or the motor dies at the start line, I shut it off early. I don't know why. And we'll come home and a uh, rod will be hanging loose, the rear end's ready to fall out. Uh, and that's just being very lucky when you're unlucky.
welcoming you to National Challenge here at Tulsa, Oklahoma. A lot of festivities here today. That's a float by the co-sponsors of this event, the United States Navy. We never ever seen a sailor like that. A lot of people here. There we go again with that beautiful Navy float. We'll also see Linda Vaughn, Miss Earth Golden Shifter, along with all the top 20 car drivers in the country, moving down the track in that parade. A total purse of, that is a big purse of $130,000 in prize money. Add to that another $100,000 in contingency prizes, and we have some kind of drag race here at Tulsa. Next up in this great parade of championship cars, Jim Dunn and his fine crew from California. This car was a winner at the big Bakersfield meet. He's one of the perennial champions out from California. Of course, great excitement here. We have spectators from all over the country, young people, old people, everybody excited about the great event here at Tulsa. call them sponsors races because we're sponsored very good over the year by Goodyear and Valvoline, all our clutch people. You know, everybody's on our car, but they won us at three big major events out of the year just for the odds. And we know we're going to lose money. I mean, it costs us $1,000 just to get here and run our car. And if we qualify, we get $500, and half of us are going to lose first round. But uh, we feel it's money ahead in the long run. Wind's Courage of Australia is a rocket-powered dragster. It decomposes hydrogen peroxide. That's how we uh, get our thrust. The car is 27 and a half feet long. It weighs 890 pounds, and the car has turned uh, 311 in 5.10 seconds.
double accident. Larry Brown tosses the motor completely out of Bob Dumont's digger. And incredibly, just as incredibly, Larry Brown walks away unhurt. Mr. Ed and Whipple car from Fresno. Billy Holt, the winner, Whipple, and Mr. Ed, Dave Beebe driving with a 6.89. Dun and Reed, that rear engine Barracuda, the only one in Tulsa being pulled now into the fire up area while Telstar is making his smoky burnout. the best you can get you work on it as hard as you can and uh, it, it just uh, it's a bummer when it breaks because i mean here we come a thousand miles you spend money and uh, it's so great you know you're going to spend money but you don't come to break something you come to get beat i mean there's 60 other losers out here and we're all mad but at least the other 15 probably got beat i mean to me when something breaks you don't get beat it's just uh it's just a bummer and that's all there is to it the only good thing about drag racing I really enjoy, I mean, it's instant. Uh, you hear, when the tree goes off, seven seconds later, you know, you're either a winner or a loser, and boy, there's a winner, and there's a lot of losers everywhere. Else. paper that they were going to have one at the shopping center at the time we were just racing in the street so i figured i had a pretty good chance and it was better than just racing in the street because they had a full christmas tree and everything so i went out there and i made my first run and i crashed and broke my handlebars and everybody was laughing at me so i got mad and went home and got a new pair of handlebars and came back and set low et and then they weren't laughing too much anymore at that race i ended up getting second place because a guy beat me out by just about a foot uh, they had a special light system where you could cut the light, and he knew about it, and I didn't. So he left on me, and he ran his best time at 6.66, and I just couldn't catch him. After that, I got it figured out how to do it and started winning more races. Well, my concern about my kids now is that they become responsible adults, 
and enjoy their life. And stopping the clock with a 7.22. Really race time, Frank Dato. All right, looks like we have another race coming up here. Done in the right lane, and down he goes. It's going to be closer, right down to the finish line. Really cranking it on, and it looks like it is done. Right across the line. He left time for him, 5.89. 5.89. Now we've got a special exhibition run by Frank Dato on his specially dismantled bicycle. The front wheel has been taken off and down he goes, giving us an exhibition run to the finish line, in and out the cones, Mr. Frank Dato. I might want to be a funny car driver when I grow up and try it. I might want to be it. Because like Cha Cha Madame, I want to try to be, you know, better and be like the fastest funny car girl. The next uh, racer to come up will be Patty Dunn. Okay, on the line is Patty Dunn going down for her qualifying run. Now to the finish line, let's see what she does. Patty Dunn, the fastest qualifier in the girls division with a 7.22. All right, it looks like Mark Serby in the left lane. Going down for his qualifying run. Mark Serby ready, cranking it on, giving it all he's got. 6.30 seconds and giving the shoot to. Gentlemen, this is the big race of the day. The final run between Mike Dunn and Kurt Claude in the left lane. Okay, this, they're all set. The amber lights are coming down the green line. He's on it. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Time now to give out our prizes and our trophies to the trophy winners here today. We have Mr. Alfonso from the bike shop across the way, and he's got some prizes to give out. He's got a bicycle racing hat for Mike Dunn, the top eliminator. That'll keep the hair out of your eyes, Mike. And along with that, we have our first place trophy. So congratulations to you. You've done a fantastic job. 5.89 seconds. Here today at Orange County International Raceway, you'll see the Division 7 of Point Speed Final. This, of course, the all-important race. It's the end of the trail for the WCS racers. Today, here at this event, the final chance for them to gain points at an all-important berth at the World Finals. This is the final points meet right here at Orange County Raceway. staged up. Jolie qualifies at a 681 last time. The track's got me a little, little spooked because uh, you know, we went out and smoked the first run and didn't prove anything and last night we came back and went up to smoke again and so I lifted out, out of it and I got her straight. When I got down there about 800 foot mark she just turned left you know for no reason. Usually the car will wander when you're coming down there, but they're not supposed to turn left. But the battle in top fuel, I'm sure you'll find highly contested. And it's Barracuda. The late model Hemi power plant just pulsing it away as Dunn comes up to the stage beam. 
Done, now all set. Remember, he's run on the tower side. He has not yet qualified. Not quite good enough to qualify. When he comes in loose, you know, you know it's a short day. He's not going to do a whole hell of a lot. But when the old man comes in the gate upset, mad at the people at the gate, then uh, that's when the old man gets comes on. And like this last run, when uh, you know all day long we've been kind of lax and everything, all of a sudden the chips are down. We got to make a pass. When he's really tight and he's really got to make a move, and then that's when he's going to do it. Sometimes it's better thinking things over, waiting. smoke the tires you know then we, if it gets on out there a little further and it starts heading for the lights and they had to pull a chute and get it off the strip because you know it's going to take the lights down they sprayed the strip and it's just it's not holding it in the middle i mean there's no no traction here we, we keep taking clutch out of it and we're, we're hoping to slip the clutch more because we don't want the tires to break loose and we've got to slip the clutch more if it works out you know we should get a fairly decent run but uh this is our, you know, this is our last chance to qualify today, so, I mean, we got to do something. Dean McCall is number seven at a 684. This is the time to sweat it out because neither of these drivers are in the program. And at a spark of interest here is that Matsumara, Jim Dunn, and Dave Beebe are all three tied for the division title for the Funny Car Points lead. Beebe already qualified. If these two cars fail to qualify now, it'll be all over as Beebe will probably win the division. This is especially important for Big Jim Dunn because Dunn has been working all summer with this experimental Plymouth Barracuda, a car that led to victory in Salt Lake City with the points championship, but has broken down in Tulsa, blew a top in the Hang 10 20 car 500, and broke a two-speed at the Sacramento points meet. Can Big Jim Dunn, who's had such a tough summer, come back and win his division crown? We'll see here today. and a 684 are the two numbers they're shooting at. Sush Matsubara has had his ups and downs over the years, and really, it's all on the line for him now. It's all on the line also for Jim Dunn, because he's got to make this qualification to go into the points championship. His crew is pushing it back. You can well imagine the tension of this man, a man who's gone from a good year with a front engine machine to this new rear experimental Plymouth Barracuda. Jim Dunn, a winner of the last points meet in the right hand lane, can also win the division if he wins here tonight.
Fisher. Sue Schmatzamora, meanwhile, does not make the program. Best thing that happened to me, uh, <laughs> rather than getting rich, uh, I'm pretty well satisfied as it is. I got a good job, I got a good family, I got a good hobby. I think the most fun I think that I've had in drag racing is when I've been able to help on the car itself. Incidentally, this race here, before we get into eliminations on this beautiful uh, shirt sleeve type evening here in Southern California, will be the final summer race here at Orange County Raceway, and it will be the Division 7 point speed final. And what a race this should be. We move now to the first race of this first round of Funny Car Eliminator. And what a chance right here for Jim Dunn to further his ambition of being the Division 7 points champion. It'll be Jim Dunn up against Smokey Joe Lee from San Diego, California. Dunn, of course, the La Mirada fireman driving that rear engine funny car, one of the very few rear engine cars in the country today in Funny Car Eliminator, and certainly the most successful rear engine car that has ever been built. Jim Dunn and Dave Beebe are tied for the points lead at the moment. The man that goes the farthest in competition tonight is the man that will take home the title, the champion of Funny Car Eliminator in Division 7. He's worked all year for this chance. We're down to the final race tonight, and this is where it all 